This is the Evenflow Gold Revolve 360 Extend, and we are gonna unbox and install this seat. Come join me. The Revolve Extend is a car seat that rotates 360 degrees. So cool. And the Extend version has rear facing limits up to 50 pounds. When you do unbox your car seat, make sure that you grab the registration card and either fill it out here or go on to the manufacturer's website and fill it out on the website. Oftentimes it can extend your warranty and it's how you'll be notified if there are any recalls. There are so many cool features about the Evenflow Revolve. A few that stand out are that it has an anti-rebound bar, that it has super high harness height. Look at this, <laughs> crazy high harness height. It has a sensor safe chest clip. It is a 360 degree rotation. You install it once for rear and forward facing mode. There's just like so many great things about this seat. Before we go to installing it in the vehicle, something that's unique about it is the top part of the seat where you harness your kiddo in comes off from the base of the seat. No, you can never use this part without this part. They go hand in hand, have to be together at all times. But while you have a clear view here when I'm not in the vehicle, I want you to see how you detach this from the base because it's the base that we have to install in the vehicle. So there's an arrow here on the car seat part and then there's an arrow on the base. You're gonna line those two arrows up and this part of the car seat comes off. Now we're gonna go install the base in the vehicle and then we'll attach this part back on. We're gonna install this seat behind the passenger seat that you could easily put it behind the driver's seat as well. Because it has that swivel feature, that's how you're gonna be able to utilize it most. The first thing is we're going to install the base before we put the seat shell on top of it. You install the base once and then can rotate the seat around for rear or forward facing mode. This base requires the use of a top tether. It's stored here on the bottom of the seat. Unhook it. And then you may need to loosen the strap a bit to be able to reach the designated top tether anchor position in your vehicle. You would do that by pressing down on the button here and pulling out. Route the strap as required by your vehicle manual. So all vehicles have specifics as to where the designated top tether anchor positions are in your vehicle do not guess, and exactly how the strap has to be routed. In this vehicle, it's through the headrest. I'm gonna loosely attach it, but I'm not gonna tighten things up until after I fully install the base. Make sure the base is lying flat on the vehicle seat and push it all the way back against the back of the vehicle seat. The vehicle seat back should be in its most upright position. To install the base, squeeze the handle on the lock strong belt tensioner and raise it all the way up. We're using the vehicle seatbelt to install this base because it's the preferred method. Route the vehicle belt through the belt path. It's really obvious where the belt path is because it's in this like very pretty blue color. Give yourself enough slack to be able to buckle it in. And then what's key for this seat is you want to get the lap belt and the shoulder belt like underneath the blue tabs here. Nothing should be sticking out. And you're going to pull any of the tension out of the shoulder belt, getting that lap out a little bit tighter. But you don't have to be crazy because this tensioning arm is going to do most of the work for you. Close the lock strong belt tensioner and the indicator will change from red to green. And that's how you know that this is like fully locked and in place. And then the final step here is that you do have to also lock the vehicle seatbelt. So pull it out. This is the most common way that you lock vehicle seatbelts. If your vehicle has been manufactured after year, model year 1996, you'll hear that ratcheting noise. So now the vehicle seatbelt is locked. You're gonna reach back and tighten up your tether strap 
So get that slack out of there. And then you're gonna test for tightness. So right here at the belt path, the path where you routed your vehicle seatbelt, give the base a shake, try to move it in any direction. You never want it to be able to move more than an inch. And this one is not moving at all. If you're having trouble closing this, then you may have made your seatbelt a little bit too tight. I've got to unbuckle it because I locked it. So next time when you put it in, just don't take out so much slack. Be a little bit looser with it. So again, buckling in, making sure it's under all of the blue tabs. The other thing that I want to make you aware of is sometimes vehicle belts have these little flaps or even little circles and they can interfere with pushing this down. If that happens to you, take the base and shimmy it either right or left on the vehicle seat to get it out of the way of this. You just can't have it right in the lines of where this is gonna close. So again, just kind of shimmy the base to where that won't happen. Line your seatbelt up under the blue tabs. Don't pull too crazy tight or it can make it hard to push this down. Push it down, then lock your vehicle seatbelt. Those are the two common issues that we see people talk about with this seat. Again, tether is nice and tight. Test for tightness. We're ready to put the seat shell on the base. To attach the seat shell to the base, you're gonna line up the two white triangles. So there's one here on the base and another one here on the seat shell. Line the two of them up and the seat will simply fall into place. To rotate it, you're gonna grab your handle on either this side or this side, pull it up and you can spin the seat. Anytime you ride with this seat, whether a child is in it or not in it, it's required to be in the locked position. And you're gonna know it's in the locked position when the indicator on the side turns from red to green. There's an indicator on both sides. Again, whether a child is in it or not in it, it's required to be in this position. The next step is to get your seat in the proper recline position. There are different zones based on the weight of your child. You're gonna do that by lifting the lever here on the back of the seat, kind of putting it in a rocking motion until you get your black ball in the indicator in the proper place based on your child's weight. When your kiddo has reached the limits of the seat in rear facing mode, it's time to turn them forward facing. And what's super cool about this seat is all you have to do is rotate it and make sure that the recline has it in the most upright position. There are a couple different versions of the Evenflow Revolve, but they all are installed in the same way. As always, installation is only part of the equation to keeping your kiddo safe in the seat. You've gotta manage all things harnessing as well, and we have a ton of resources for you on this channel of how to make sure your rear and forward-facing kiddo is harnessed in correctly. If you found this video helpful, please like it, subscribe to the channel, follow along for lots more. And if you have any questions about the Evenflow Revolve Gold or the Evenflow Revolve, please drop them in the comments below and we'll be sure to answer.